It's 7 p.m. and time to open the doors for our big night. This moment here will go down in eternity. Our promotional efforts this week have been successful and a small crowd has turned up. Brenda gets to work and does a fantastic job as the worship leader, getting the audience on their feet and into the spirit of the occasion. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. And with the crowd warmed up, it's time for guest speaker Pastor Sean Pinder to take control of the mic. We were in a service last week. There was a young man in that service. His left foot was three quarters of an inch shorter than his right foot. Whilst we prayed for this young man, the Holy Spirit touched this man and grew his leg out evenly with the other one right before everybody's eyes. With Pastor Sean's preaching filtering through the walls, Nathan has a last few moments to brush up on his act. But I feel Jesus is getting ready to pass on Sunday. I feel like Sunday. After Pastor Sean heats up the atmosphere in the room, he hands over to Nathan. And masquerading as Pastor James Collins, the moment of his final task arrives. Oh you ready, brother? Amen. Sing Amazing Grace. You can do it. It's all yours. Can this ordinary man, a diving instructor, convince everyone here that he truly is Pastor James Collins, the visiting faith healer who's able to work miracles? My life, I had, I had everything you'd want, everything you'd want as a kid. But for whatever reason, that just wasn't enough for me. And I found myself turning to drugs. If Nathan is nervous, he certainly isn't showing it. And his first story about his fall from grace and subsequent redemption has his audience engrossed. The next thing I remember, I woke in that hospital. But I think you know, I think any of you here right now know, you know who got me there. And I praise the Lord now, because he got me there. He got me there. I'm very impressed with this performance, and the audience is really moved. That preacher said to me, you cannot fill that God-shaped hole with drugs. <laughs> who knows the power of those words? Stand up and praise him, you know the power of those words. Hallelujah. As only from Trinity predicted, his open style seems to strike a chord with the congregation. He's effortlessly reciting scripture. Just like in Matthew 8, when the leper said, Lord, if you are willing, I will be healed. And for the next couple of hours, he seems completely happy in his skin as Pastor James. His power is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Forever his power is the same. With the audience eating out of his hand, it's time to change the tempo. The Lord is speaking to me. And it's as though I could tell any one of you something the Lord is telling me right now. Owen? Your name is Owen, right? Just as we've seen with other faith healers, Nathan has been fed inside information about some of the congregation from contact cards we had them fill out before the show. Owen, the Lord has a plan for you. He sees you singing in front of thousands. He doesn't want you to worry about your family. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. There are Moses here tonight. The Lord is telling me, Moses, that you're worried about condition of the blood, diabetes. Is that right, Moses? I have type 2 diabetes. I can see it glowing, Moses. We all feel uncomfortable deceiving the people in our audience, but I remember only from Trinity's words that we must be hypocrites for a while so the reality can be shown. Praise the Lord. You're a mighty servant, Gilman. You're a mighty servant. And then it's time for people to be slain in the spirit. This is the point where faith healers supposedly channel the power of God to allow the people they touch to experience an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Give him your power. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. And with the hypnotic atmosphere built up, our scuba diver creates exactly the same effect we've seen so many times before. Amen. Amen. Two hours into the show, we reach the part where most faith Hallelujah. healers would ask their congregation to donate to their ministry. Instead, we have a very different message. I want to talk a small to gospel of truth about the dangers of trusting in such faith healers. I want to talk to you, not as a healer. I just want to talk to you as a fellow human being. I have seen many fraudulent healers leave people confused and dangerously, dangerously misguided. Those this is a carefully worded speech designed specifically not to question anyone's faith, but to make them question the motives behind some faith healers' requests for cash. I say this because I care, I care a lot about every single one of you. Those preachers that we spoke about who say, throw your pills away. It's also to explain what healing is and isn't, and to warn people of the dangers of rejecting conventional medical treatment. Sometimes a healing can occur that really only changes in the mind. Adrenaline and euphoria. 
These are powerful things and they act like temporary painkillers. And that's why in healing events, you don't see severely handicapped people. They're pushed to the back. And many, many of these healers, as they call themselves, they twist scripture and they take money from people who can ill afford it, who can ill afford it. As I stand here today, I do not believe he is at work through these so-called healers. God doesn't want your money to make you well. What a travesty to the message of Jesus to say you have to pay for God to heal you. That's not what the Lord preached. That's not what Jesus preached. And who here believes Jesus speaks the truth? Amen. That's right. Amen. I truly pray that you will take away tonight that knowledge that your worth in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ, your happiness, our health are in no way related to the amount of money you take out of your pockets and hand over to these so-called healers, these, these supposed men of God. I hope each and every one of you will find your place in heaven where you can praise his mighty name for all time and eternity. And that the Lord carves a special place for these people in hell. Unsure of the overall reaction, we exit quickly and leave the area of the theatre. We didn't get a big enough audience to do everything we wanted. I think we did a good thing. Mm. I, no, I know we did a good thing. Yeah? Yeah, we did do a good thing. So that's what I remember you said this to me a long time ago. We just helped one person. And I think there's more than one help tonight with that. Um, it's worth it, isn't it? It's worth six months of yeah, absolutely. stressful. Absolutely. Argumentative work. <laughs> I only swore a couple of times. <laughs> well done. Well done. We've spent the last six months ensuring that what we've done is not an attack on sincerely held beliefs or decent churchgoers. This isn't a comment on faith, it's not a comment on the church, it is an attempt to expose what I believe to be a systematic and manipulative exploitation of the vulnerable, where greed can ruin people's lives and all in the name of God. It works on every single volunteer. Can you feel that? Because I can feel something happen there. You feel Yeah. Yeah? What I want you to do, extend your legs, put your feet into my hands. Okay. Even do you want me to fall apart and be shit? Or do you want it to be good? No, no, I just want you just to, just to bump through that a little bit. It's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. You've got to keep changing stuff.